Hi, I'm Sarah McAllister, and today I'm going to be talking about kangaroo caching billions of tiny objects on Flash. This work is uh, in collaboration with a bunch of people here at Carnegie Mellon, along with our collaborators at Facebook and Microsoft Research. So in kangaroo, we're talking about caching billions of tiny objects. And why are we focusing on tiny objects? Well, it's because they're prevalent. You can see them in social graphs, uh, such as at the Facebook social graph, where the edges are on average 100 bytes, or um, we can see it in IoT metadata, where you have many sensors, and each one each sensor has a bunch of metadata that average around 300 bytes in Microsoft Azure. Or we can see them in Twitter tweets, which average about 33 characters per tweet. And so all of these objects are really tiny, and there's a lot of them, which means we need a massive infrastructure to be able to provide them at scale. And so that's where caching comes in. So if we want to, uh, if an application wants these objects, it's going to send a request for these objects, which is first going to hit a caching layer. And then if the caching layer has a miss, it'll go to the database layer. And so the caching layer here, its main purpose is to lower the average latency of objects overall and to keep, but more importantly, to keep load off backend services. And so to do this most effectively, we want a large caching layer. And to get a large caching layer without um, paying too much for this caching layer, a lot of uh, companies employ Flash because it's 100 times cheaper per bit um, than using DRAM and allows you to have larger caches for the same amount of money. So that leads us to the overall uh, problem that Kinger is trying to solve, which is ca caching billions of tiny objects on Flash. And in prior work, we either have too many Flash rates where we have a large meta memory overhead when we look at flash caches and tiny objects. Either way, we waste money on the flash cache. And thus, Kangaroo works to keep writes and memory under protection constraints while it reduces misses by 29% over uh, prior work. And Kangaroo is open source and it's integrated into CacheLib, which is Facebook's um, caching engine that's open source and used in production on Facebook. All right, so now that I've gone over the introduction, I'm going to next go into the prior work and show you how uh, prior work fails to live up um, to the demands that a tiny object flash cache needs, how uh, Kangaroo satisfies these production constraints, and then finally the results. So the big problem with caching on flash, in addition to other caching problems, is that you have this additional write constraint. Although flash is cheaper than DRAM, it has a limited write endurance um, to the extent that you don't see in DRAM. Uh, you can achieve this write endurance if you're not careful during the normal lifetime of a flash device. And if you hit this write endurance limit, you can no longer write to the device and the device becomes unusable. So to prevent um, running into this, a lot of flash caches use a log structured approach. And this is because a log structured approach allows you to buffer a whole bunch of new objects that you want to write to flash um, in memory and then write them all out um, to flash into a circular log at the same time. And then you need a log index to keep track of where everything is on Flash. Because you have these large buffered writes, you're going to minimize the number of uh, bytes written that you have to have to Flash. And so um, you're minimizing uh, the impact you have on the write limit that you have on Flash and keeping allowing the device to stay alive for longer. On the other hand, you have to have a full in-memory index. And with just 30 bits per object, this becomes really costly. So at 30 bits per object, if you have 40 100 byte objects, um, you, you have a 4% overhead, which if we expand this to an uh, entire two terabyte flash cache, leads to 75 gigabytes of memory overhead um, overall. And that's just for the metadata overhead. That's not including any in-memory cache that you want to include on your flash cache or any other uh, metadata you want to hold for keeping track of where objects uh, which objects are popular or not. And so and because of this, we can imagine that you might want to optimize for a low memory overhead. And one way to do this is using a set associative cache, which is similar to like a processor cache, as you might see. Um, so to do a set associative cache, you're going to hash an object's key, such as the purple object here that we're trying to insert, um, to find what set it lives in on flush you would read this set off of Flash, which is going to be at minimum just a page of Flash that you're reading, uh, insert the new object, potentially evicting old objects, and then rewrite the entire set to Flash. The advantage of this is that you don't need an index. 
because you're just hashing that um, object's key to find where it lives on flash. So this leads to a low memory overhead. The downside is that there's a large write overhead. We have to write four kilobytes for any new object that we're inserting into the cache. So that extra um, number of bytes that we have to write adds up quickly and impacts the lifetime of the device due to the flash's limited write endurance. So if we look at prior work as a whole, we see that we have like two main things that we're focused on. We either have um, memory overhead, which you can see here on the y-axis, or write overhead, which you can see on the x-axis. So a log structure cache has a high memory overhead because it has to keep its index, but a low write overhead, whereas a set associative cache has the opposite. For a production system, neither of these really work because we want a low write overhead and a low memory overhead. And thus, we need some system that allows us to get to this uh, low overhead. And that's where Kangaroo comes in. Kangaroo spans the trade-off between memory overhead and write overhead and allows us to reach this production systems constraints. So now let's see how Kangaroo works. And so Kangaroo has two main parts. It has the K log and K set. K log is about 5 to 10% of flash capacity and is structured like a log structure cache. Um, K set is a set associative cache and receives objects as they're evicted from K-log. So to look into this a little more, let's see what happens if we insert an object into K-log. So here, we're going to insert this blue object into K-log, and we're going to write it out via buffer write, just like in a log structured cache. We're going to then flush it from K-log, flush objects from K-log to K-set as K-log fills up, such as this yellow object here. When we do that, we're going to take any objects that map to the same set in K-set, and write them together to K set. So here the pink and the yellow objects map to the same set in K set. So we're going to move both of them together. And so this allows us to amortize writes to K set. Um, specifically, if we look at the case where we're writing one new object versus two new objects into K set, we can see that we're writing the same number of bytes to K set. We're still writing that set size, so those four kilobytes, independent of how many new objects we're writing. So if we look at the right amplification, which is the number of bytes we write, divided by the number of bytes of the object, we can see that we would half the right amplification if we double the number of bytes of an object that we're writing, which means that being able to find multiple objects to write at the same time to K-set allows us to amortize these writes that we're doing over multiple new objects. And K-log, um, by, by using 5 to 10% of the splash capacity, allows us enough time to find these set collisions and amortize the number of writes that we're doing. We can do even better than this by implementing a threshold, a threshold admission policy, um, which takes advantage of the fact that in a cache, we can just discard objects um, when they're not valuable to us for some reason. And so here, this blue object has no other match um, to move it to K-set. Um, so it would incur a really high write cost if we move it to K-set. So rather than do that, we're going to implement a threshold, say in this case two, um, where if we don't have at least two objects to write to a set, we're not going to move any objects to that set. And instead we're gonna evict those objects. So here we're just gonna throw that blue object away because it has no partner. And doing these two things, having um, amortizing writes and then furthering that up by having a threshold allows us to um, have a lower write overhead at potentially the expense of a higher memory overhead if we have a larger k-log, but we can choose where along that curve we want to be, and it allows us to hit that production constraint. All right, so how does this work in practice? <laughs> how, what do our results actually look like? So if we run kangaroo versus a uh, log structure cache and set associative cache on a seven-day Facebook trace, Kangaroo does the best. And so here you can see we have miss ratio on the y-axis and days on the x-axis. So if we first look at the log structured cache, the log structured cache is severely DRAM constrained. And this is even under a favorable um, setup to the log structured cache where we give it extra DRAM um, for various different reasons. So that's not ideal. So for the set associative cache, it does better. Um, however, it's still pretty write constrained um, in this setup, um, which is a pretty reasonable production based setup. So then if we look at kangaroo, uh, we can see that it does better than both the set associative cache and the log structure cache. In fact, it can reduce um, misses by 29% over the set associative cache. And it does this by spanning the DRAM versus write overhead trade-off. In addition, it has um, some uh, optimizations to decrease misses, um, which I encourage you to look at the paper for.
And so overall, we see Kangaroo allows us to cache billions of tiny objects on Flash um, with write rates and metadata overheads within bounds of production constraints, while still having a 29% decrease in misses over competitors. And I encourage you to see papers for more details, including how we reduce misses, our sustained performance across many different constraints, and including um, looking at other traces and our shadow production setup at Facebook. And finally, I would like to thank the Cashlib team at Facebook and both Facebook and Twitter for sharing traces with us.